let me introduce to the red corner, Joachim Sharp Bergenson. Joachim Sharp Bergenson coming all the way from Frontline Academy in Norway. They always come and they always bring it, that's for sure. Whether it's with their heavy hands or with their great grappling prowess, we're just honored to have Frontline Academy here tonight. I haven't seen Joachim before, so it'll be really good to see his uh, debut here at MMA Battle Arena, running, running up the ranks of the 70 kilo lightweight division. His beard looks like it weighs 70 That's kilos. That's a proper Chris. Norwegian beard. I appreciate a powerful beard. Do you think it adds some cushioning? Is it going to stop you getting knocked out? Maybe a bit of slipping if you're oiling it properly. <laughs> you could just let those fists roll off it. Beautiful beard. Yeah, at Frontline, they bring a team to every single battle arena. There's such a huge organization. I mean, it's this giant gym, like giant mat area. They have a few U UFC fighters coming out of there. Two uh, World Gi and No Gi grappling champions as well. They are probably one of Europe's top premier mixed martial arts clubs. And uh, they always bring the heat here to battle arena. They definitely do. And if you've got all that Chris just said, you've got great grappling, you've got great striking, you've got those those teammates and competitors rising up to the very top of the sport, that is the UFC, of course, you're going to have some real successes going on. And Yakeem Sharp Bergenson is going to be making it happen today. Stepping into the cage. Looks like he's in great shape. Oh, yeah, ready to go. Kicking off, this is our first fight of the evening here at Ballerina 52 at Edge Baston Stadium in Birmingham, the Midlands. Just the Midlands, just the middle. Just in the middle. Yep. And we're brought to you live on Fight.tv and, of course, Facebook Live as well. So if you're tuning in, tell your friends. Make sure you tag them in those posts and get them watching because there's sure to be some fireworks just momentarily. Especially with the frontline guys. Guys like Joachim, they are knockout artists. Also, jiu-jitsu machines, you never really know with the frontline guys. It's so hard to game plan because they're just good at everything. Well, he certainly looks like he's good at everything. He's very, very composed as Joachim. I want to grow a beard. I think you should. I got a little bit. It's a bit scraggly. You, yours is better than mine. I've been growing it since the last battle arena, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I want a beard like that. That is a powerful beard. And it, when you like, you shave the top of your head and leave the bottom. I like that effort. You just pushed it down. George Kennedy from LSF, another lightweight fighter coming up to the ring. That is Leicester Shoot Fighters, one of the UK's top gyms as well. Uh, famous for Dan Hardy, does a lot of his training there. The uh, former UFC title challenger turned analyst, turned commentator. Does a lot of uh, his training out of Leicester Shoot Fighters under the tutelage of Nathan Leverton. Generally considered to be one of the UK's top grappling coaches. So this could be a balance of styles here. Not necessarily a clash of styles like you usually get kickboxer slash wrestler slash submission artist. We've got two great gyms going at it in the forms of Kennedy and Bergenson. Lester Shoot, Nathan Leverson, and Frontline Academy, probably most notable for Alexander Gustafson, who was the one, one of the first to take down John Jones in the UFC. So this is gonna be an absolute barn burner. And uh, I, was, I was watching George Kennedy warming up backstage and he was doing a lot of drills off well, he's doing it in the wall backstage, but to replicate the cage panel, it seems to think the fight's going to end up there. He was doing a lot where he was playing forward and then trying to get the takedown and a lot of turning in. And that's the thing, this isn't as big as like a UFC cage, so quite often you can end up bumping against one of the cage panels and you have to have that cage card. And it's like a whole martial art on its own. George Kennedy's looking very ripped in excellent safe shake excellent, excellent condition. Yeah, he's winning the abs competition. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, in our first contest of the afternoon, Battle Arena presents three three-minute rounds of amateur mixed martial arts in the 70-kilogram weight division. Introducing first in the red corner, representing Frontline Academy Norway, Joachim Sharp Bergenson. <laughs> Across the cage, his opponent in the blue corner, representing LSF. George Kennedy! Our referee in charge of the action, Mr. Paul Nichols. We have uh, Joachim representing Frontline Academy in the red and black shorts, and George Kennedy representing Leicester Shoot Fighters in the black Valley Tudor shorts. I can't wait to see how these blizz Blizzard Fight Sport gloves go. They are good. They look really, really sharp. 
They say Arctic power on them. Let's see if Yakim will bring that Arctic power Ooh, right now. Ooh, he's letting the beard hang out. Can you see that? Oh, and he eats a right on it straight away. Ooh, comes underneath. Is he a grappler? Oh, nice knee there from George. Oh, it looked like he was going outside judo type trip, but just kind of pulled half guard. Yeah, he did kind of pull half guard there. It just wasn't well right. set up that... that but uh, look at that lockdown. Banana split. Could we see something spectacular here? This would be wow. submission of the year. Oh, that's the that's a good defense. Punch the guy in the face. I appreciate that. He's using it to come out the back. He's getting great pressure on that leg. What an amazing transition. Now he's got him pressed up against the cage. Let's see if Kennedy can wall walk, get his back on the cage, start getting those legs under him, stand back up. That's very good work from George Kennedy to get back up. I know we're only a minute into this fight, but Joachim's uh, striking looked very, very beginnery, but his grappling looks super advanced. He probably wants this fight back on the floor. I think that's what he's looking for now. He's, he's tying up that arm, almost looking for maybe a judo throw. He's got some, feeding some knees into the inside thigh of Kennedy there. And there we are live on Facebook TV. Do we got any comments quite yet? Anybody watching? Oh, we well, loads of viewers already watching this amazing battle here at Battle Arena number 52. We have Joachim pressing up George Kennedy against the cage. And this is why I saw George Kennedy drilling backstage. Maybe he was drilling it because it might be a little bit of a weak point for him because he does seem to be a bit stuck. Yeah, he's I want to see it on the other side of the chin there. Give us a shout out on Facebook what you think they, these boys should be doing. And we'll give some amateur commentary as well. But he's feeding that knee in. And look, oh, there he goes. He wonderful got, he trip. There's a bit of blood, I think, coming from the top of the head of Joachim. Maybe it's but that was an excellent little trip, little almost lateral drop kind of style. Oh, over under throw. And straight into like a butterfly sweep with a guillotine grip. It's going to be very hard for him to finish this choke with that grip. But if he can use that, that leg position to maybe flip him over, get on top. Yeah, this is one thing I'd like to see Yakim change. He just seems to be locked down again. The bottom. He's looking at lockdown on that side. And now so he's going to use it to elevate. Again, again, again. So a lockdown is where he's interlaced his legs like that and stretching it out. It means that George can't move in because his leg is locked out behind him. And Joachim might look for what he did last time, which is to get his right arm under the leg and then drag it across. But you do risk eating a few heavy shots. And here's George is definitely doing better to keep himself balanced right now. He's not allowing that. You should see Yakim looking for that underhook on his right side, which he gets there. Straight away, will he get the banana split? He's got to keep the calf on his shoulder so that Yakim There's can't bend his leg. That looks brutal. That's a look of agony on the wow, face of George Kennedy. Wow, this is flexibility. He gets look on top. Oh, this oh, is where you can finish 10 it. Ten seconds. Wow, that's a, he is going to have some sore groin muscles tomorrow. Yeah, I want to see Yakim just posture up right now and land some shots of his own, give him something to think about at the very, very end. Wow, a really... <laughs> Wow. Excellent, excellent grappling from Yakim. I want to see George Kennedy try to keep him off a bit more in that second round. How but often did we see a banana split attempt? Very seldom. And that was two in one round. One three minute round, we saw two banana split attempts, and it was close. We can see the pain on the face of George. He was grimacing very well, Kennedy. He, yeah, George Kennedy's got doesn't have a poker face, that's for sure. He was letting that, that pain show. Even just getting that painful groin stretch can be enough to make a lot of guys tap. You see a lot of that at um, these submission-only competitions nowadays with people doing a lot of the 10th Planet sort of lockdown work, which I know you're very, very familiar with, Chris. Well, it, it's really what, effective. What did Yakim have to do to finish that? So his shoulder was under the knee, not the calf muscle, which meant that uh, George could bend his leg. So it means there's not as much of a, of a stretch on his hamstring. But a lot of the time in these kind of competitions, the guys will just take the hamstring rip, mm. right? Just to be able to keep fighting. So a common transition is you sneak out the back and then you attack for what we call a calf crush or Eddie Bravo calls it the vaporizer because it destroys your knee. Mm. But I think that's actually against the battle arena rules, that particular submission, because it's a twisting leg lock. Yeah. But generally plan B is to pop out the back and get on top. And that's exactly what uh, Joachim did. And all credit to him, I'm very impressed. Got to give a big shout out to Rhino who's watching over there on Facebook Live. Rhino, tell your mates, get them all watching because this is the second round and it could all be decided here in these next three minutes. Oh, he came, almost forgot the mouth guard there. Gets put in. Very gamely. A lot of gameness there. <laughs> Maybe remember to forget the mouth guard a little bit later on, Chris, when you're in the corner. Oh Buy you an extra 10 seconds. Ready. Ready. Go. We're ready. We're coming out. I want to see George Kennedy get that jab snapping off pretty early. I'm wondering what his corner said. There you go. He's, this is what George Kennedy needs to do. He needs to strike. 
That right hand connected and had Yakim thinking twice. Yeah, he's really telegraphing all of his strikes. I think Yakim's only striking just so he can drop levels like he did there and look to go for the takedown. Tie up those hips. Yeah, Big he's left hook pure leads. grappler. That lead left hook was sweet by George. George has got to push that head down. Where the head goes, the body follows. And Yakim is back in this familiar position. Under hook on the right side. Head position's all right. Now we've got to be expecting another judo style trip off the key cage here. He's doing well to keep those keep active with knees to the thighs of George Kennedy. And then get, get Kennedy to kind of push off. And I think that's why he did the, the time he was successful. Was get the push back and be able to reverse the position. Yerkin's striking has, has looked very suspect. Oh, Paul's guard. But his grappling has looked really good. Now, you would often think jumping to the bottom position would be a huge mistake, but he's instantly looking for rubber guard once again, maybe that kind of 10th planet system and attacking. And it means that George can't just throw reckless abandoned ground and pound because he has to be so wary of leaving his arms out for an armbar or one getting pushed through for a triangle choke. Yeah, and interestingly, Yakim's got that butterfly hook on the left side. He's using it to push out that leg, George, as oh. he's setting up the that rubber guard. So he's going to hold the foot, and then he's going to try and isolate uh, George's left arm. He's going to try and wrap it around just like that. You see, he just did it. It slipped underneath, and that means he's got a lot more posture control now, and that makes a big difference of where George's left arm is. That's the battle. You George see, now he's got it in the right place. That's under his armpit. That's exactly where he wants uh, George's left arm. And that means his rubber guard's going to be much more effective. Now he's going to be trying to get onto his left side and work that foot deeper over. But George is aware of it and keeping his head forward. That's a great defense to rubber guard. It's to drive forward because most people want to pull out. And that actually makes means he's going to have space to feed his foot over. But if you drive in, grind your forehead, it's going to make it a lot harder for Joachim. Great head position by George Kennedy. Joachim's doing well to kind trouble him a bit with those palm strikes to the head trying to make him have a reaction where he wants to get out of there pull out like you said so he can get that triangle choke this is the trouble with pulling guard in MMA though you put yourself in a very vulnerable position because as we see the rubber guards almost failed there it's he failed but he's got control of that left arm and that's going to leave him open to other attacks but when you have someone like Nathan Levitin in your corner you know, it's 10 plus years of grappling experience. He's gonna, he's gonna, like little simple bit of advice, just grind your forehead in his face. And that's gonna kill this rubber guard. And that's why having a good corner team is so important. Well, now he's going for a, almost like a TP choke there. Yeah, with just everything wrong. But yeah, <laughs> nothing, no I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. But honestly, I, I would score that for Joachim. George did nothing from the top. Just being active. Didn't add a single thing. And Joachim's looking for submissions. There were a couple. That lead check hook, though, at the beginning yep. for George Kennedy was the biggest connection that we had in that round. Yakim's doing well to 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 kind of just frustrate George Kennedy, taking down, pulling guard, etc. I would like to see Yakim try to not accept the bottom position because you're going to go up against somebody that's going to be able to power out of those positions and probably smash you up a bit. But he is he does have the the right blueprint at the moment to stifle George Kennedy's attacks. Again, I think George Kennedy is getting more advice to just talk about not engaging his cage, circling away, cutting angles, landing that jab. I, I don't want to see that jab just to trouble Yakim getting in. Maybe flash up some kicks and knees. This is why MMA can be very difficult to score because it takes a very knowledgeable uh, judge to recognize that lockdown looking for banana splits. He might just think, someone with less knowledge might just think, oh, he's stuck on the bottom. And then... You know, a judge has got to recognize that Joaquin didn't get taken down. He actually pulled guard. He pulled George on top of him because he knew that he has a good rubber guard off his back and he's very aggressive with it. So in my mind, uh, Joaquin is up two rounds, but it's very, very, very difficult to score a fight like this. Interestingly, the only damage, visible damage really done is that joaquin has got a bloody nose right now, so he can't be breathing in through that nose, so his jaw is going to be open as he's breathing. And as you said earlier, that jaw, that beard was pointed right forward yeah he's still so vulnerable to getting tagged he's, look hands down let's see how george kennedy it's not hands down karate style it's just hands down <laughs> interestingly that george kennedy is also flapping his arms around a little bit hands are a little bit low there as well look at that big looping that's right what hand. he needs just to keep hitting that right doesn't want to clinch doesn't want to get on top he might it's that instinct you know you, you've trained to duck under and get the takedown but you have to adapt to the style of fighter you're with if you spend five minutes stuck in rubber guard we don't want to take, do a takedown where we're going to land straight in guard again. Again, I'm wondering why he's, he's setting up this kind of modified teepee with both arms in. He moves away from that, does Yakim, and now he's seeming to go back to that rubber guard. But gr great head position by George Kennedy. 
Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, if his head was on the other side of Joaquim's head, he would be in a lot of trouble because then Joaquim would have space to bring that leg over. But if, as long as he stays on his left of that head, it's going to make it very, very difficult. And he's going for, like, just a body scissors. It's very old school. Especially but, uh, up on the top of the rib area yeah. there. It's not going to squeeze very much. But it's just becoming almost like a stifle of styles here. We talked about how great these two gyms are, Leicester Shoot and Frontline Academy, both with great grappling prowess and excellent training partners. And you're kind of getting this, this meet where both, both fighters are just, yeah, they're just kind of meeting as equals here. They're almost cancelling each other out. There we go. Get rid of that rubber guard. So, Yakim's very wily. Look at him setting up grapevines from the bottom. There's nothing more annoying than that. <laughs> I'm very impressed with his grappling. I mean, he has been constantly trying and working, and uh, it's just meant that George can't really do any ground and pound without risking stuff. I think right now he's just trying to set up maybe an old school triangle. Yeah, he looks like he's just getting wrist control, trying to sneak a knee through. But you're right in front of George's corner. He's got the grappling supremo, Nathan Leverton, giving him advice. Paul Nichols not so happy as well. He's standing them back up, giving... Great stand-up. Yeah, I think so as well. Let's, I want to see that jab. Just somebody flash a jab, please. please. That's your rapier. That's what you're going to Oh, look in the body. That's more like it, there George. There go. Couple into the body, but he still gets pressed up against the cage. Talking about getting double underhooks there is Nathan Leverton to try to direct George to reverse the position. There we go. He starts sneaking that hand in so hard with these eight-ounce gloves. But George Kennedy gets oh, it and then... Pulling guard again. Pulls guard again. See, everyone's got their bias. I'm a, I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy, so I don't mind a bit of guard pulling sometimes, as long as you're effective with it. And, and I'd say it's been reasonably effective. It certainly has meant that George can't do anything counter-wise because he's just so nervous. And he's also, every time he's isolating the arm, and George is making a lot of mistakes. He's letting his arm sneak under the armpit there. Um, just little errors that he's going to yeah, learn from in the next fight. But I'd like to see him posture up here, get a hand up maybe under the chin. Push I'd like to see up. him posture up, but... It's a big risk with someone like Akeem because, you know, he, he is so active off his back. You know, there's the old style of just grind your forehead, land some punches, wait for the ref to stand you up. Oh, still going to that rubber guard. It's been relatively ineffective, Ten though. Ten seconds left. And it doesn't seem like any finish. Looks like, like I said, Chris, just a little bit, little bit of stifling there. Unfortunately, some problems happening. It wasn't the most exciting fight I've ever seen. It was a bit of a uh, kind of just bal ba you know, balancing each other out. It was uh, the, the very aggressive style from Leicester Shoot Fighters, George, but Hakeem constantly looking for rubber guard. It almost felt like, felt like he was lacking the flexibility. You know, yeah, he, he wasn't able to bring that, that hip all the way up and get that foot all the way through to start setting up or even start looking at uh, Gogo Pilatas or something like that. You know, if you're flexible enough to, say, put your legs behind your head, right, then, you, <laughs> then you're going to be flexible enough to get your leg in that gap, even when they're grinding their forehead in, right? So that's why the 10th Planet guys do spend so much time working on their flexibility and their stretching, and it tends to attract people that are very, very flexible. Um, you know, I, I would have liked to see Yukim try it and then maybe transition to something else, a bit of open guard, some butterfly sweeps, or even that lockdown, use it to take the back. I was, w I was waiting for so much more from Yakim, either, like you said, back tapes, possibly looking for sweeps, or just transitioning into a regular run-of-the-mill guard, waiting for George to posture up and then trying to snap arm bars and triangles up. It seems to be what he was going for there. But a great, nice technical little fight to kick off Ballerina 52 here at Edgebaston Stadium, Birmingham. I'm quite interested to see the, the uh, judge's decision on this one. I want to know what the judge's breakdown is of, I think, whereas you whereas you thought second round probably went to Yakim, I could see that going to George just because he landed a left yeah. hook and he was yeah. able to, to almost, you almost start thinking that somebody's afraid to stand with you and they start pulling guard. But they don't just stand there. Point to the center of the cage next time, George, and just bang with the guy. <laughs> Goad him into standing up. Try to attack his manhood. Tell him that he's not, and I didn't necessarily mean by, you know, low blows or anything like that. I mean, tell somebody that they the only way that they're going to show themselves is to show that they can stand up and be a full contact fighter. Here we go for decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the first contest of the afternoon, we consult the judges' scorecards. It is a split decision. To the red corner, Joachim Sharp Bergenson.
So fine, really so fine. fine. How are you feeling after that one? Tired. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Missions in the first round. I want to get that uh, electric chair and uh, you're trying to get it. <laughs> yeah, we spoke about it yesterday about the electric chair, and I see you sort of trying the first round. How close do you think he was getting that? It all depends how I, I can see him being so like he was struggling a bit, but uh, no, he's a tough lad. Yeah, he stuck it out and he was strong, hey. <laughs> so, what's next for you now? Where are you going from here? Uh, um, maybe someone, uh, uh, Fight for the title! To to Come on! Title. Not the title yet. I've got... Good, yeah. Okay, so another grappler to test your grappling. Yeah, be good, yeah. Awesome, well, great, great performance and great win. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll see him again here soon. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner, Joachim Sharp Bergenson. Thank okay, you very everyone. much, Carsten. Once again, congratulations to Joachim Sharp-Bergenson and commiserations to George Kennedy.